So feedback ranks very highly, and I think it's really interesting to ask why it ranks highly, and certainly what took me so long in terms of writing um, the work around feedback and why I'm still working on it and struggling to understand it is why it's so powerful. Like, the problem is, on average, it's incredibly powerful, but there's massive variation. There's massive good, there's massive bad feedback. And it depends, as we've been talking about, and we're gonna be learning about in this course, it depends on the nature of the feedback, when, just in time, just for whom, how much, what the nature of it is as we've been talking, the surface and deep notion, the three questions, the three levels. And that's why we developed that whole model of feedback to better understand why it's such a powerful influence and why sometimes it's a disaster. But it's really stunning that under almost everything at the top of the visible learning chart, the notion of feedback's there. The irony is that the most powerful form of feedback that dominates the stuff at the top of the chart is the feedback teachers receive about their impact, how they're going, where they're going, who they've had impact on, the magnitude of their impact. And this is why we say that when a teacher walks into a classroom and say that my job here today is to understand my impact, to receive assessment, to receive feedback about my impact, going to assessment. This is why we say assessment is feedback to teachers. And if teachers think of it that way, then kids are the beneficiaries. About through the assessment, at the end of giving this test, you should say, well, what did I learn about what I did well? For whom? And what the magnitude is? What did I learn about where to next? And if you learnt nothing from that teacher, you've just wasted the kid's time. And if you don't believe me, before the kid does the assessment next time, ask the kid to put the grade, what they think they're going to get. They are stunningly good at estimating the amount of effort they're going to put in. Your job is to turn that on its head and to ask your questions about the feedback that you received. And that's why the, at the top of the chart, that's the dominant. That's why response to intervention. That's why teacher clarity. That's why showing kids what success looks like up front. That's why collective self-efficacy is way up there because it's dominated about feedback to the teacher about their impact. Feedback to the teacher is particularly powerful because in many cases the teacher is the person in the room that's expected to set the standard. Where are we going? The teacher's in the room there to help the students, particularly at that surface level, to understand what the appropriate content is. They're also there to help them relate that content, to go to that deep phase. They're there to help make those decisions. What's the next most appropriate from the surface through the deep, through the transfer? They're there constantly trying to check and ask, how am I going with the student? Where is the student at now? What does the student need to do? When do I give the student those responsibilities? When I give them the chance to self-talk? And it's not the teacher in the room dictating and talking all the time. It's the teacher making those on-the-moment judgments in light of the evidence of the impact and the decisions they made. And that's why we argue that the feedback to the teacher is the most powerful form if you want to maximize student learning. The major message underlying all this work is a very simple three-word maxim. Know thy impact. Walking into a classroom and saying, I have to know what impact means. I have to know what the magnitude of impact means. I need to worry about the equity issue. How many kids are getting that impact? I need to have some collegial discussions about whether my concept of impact is challenging enough or appropriate enough. I need to find out at all times how we're going to look at that nature of impact. Now, let's get real. Most of us go into teaching because we want to have an impact on kids. That's all I'm talking about. Maximise your impact.